Welcome to the first video on this tutorial series for the Aero Game Framework. So Aero Game Framework is a game framework for Roblox specifically, and it was designed with modularity in mind, but also just trying to simplify the communication between your code, both within uh, your current environment boundary, so within the client, within the server, but also between the server client boundary. And uh, if you've done any game development on Roblox, you know that in order to communicate between the server and client and vice versa, you have to create a bunch of remote functions and remote events. Now, what this framework does is it really puts that into the background and acts as a middleman between uh, those actual objects. So you don't actually have to create those ever by hand. But in this first video, I'm going to go into really just how to set up the framework and get it going. So this is the GitHub page for the framework. All the source code lives here, kind of your central point of access for the framework. Uh, but really what we're gonna be going through is documentation pages for this. And so there's a link for that right here in the description on GitHub, and it's also linked down here in documentation. So go to that site and you'd be like here. And uh, this is the main documentation. So we're just gonna go through basically the home page and the install and setup page in this video. So I already talked about what this is about. Uh, also, this is an open source project, so uh, collaboration is definitely encouraged. And uh, I've had quite a few people contribute to this project, uh, both in terms of adding code, removing code, um, suggesting additions to the framework, uh, suggesting changes, et cetera, uh, opening issues when there's problems that they find. So. Really, the support of everyone really makes this framework what it is. At the bottom here, you'll see an ex a really simple example of a client-side controller and a server-side service. And we'll go into how these actually work internally and how to set them up in a later video. But this is kind of a really quick example of what you could make. Again, this is an example of code communicating between the server and the client without explicitly touching any remote events or remote functions. So that's pretty nice. All right, so let's move to the install and setup page. So the preferred editor for this framework is Visual Studio Code. Uh, VS Code is a completely free piece of software. I highly recommend getting this piece of software. And it's basically going to be required in terms of using this uh, framework. Not sure why that's not loading right now, but that's all right. So, what are the requirements? First and foremost, we have the Air Game Framework extension, and this is absolutely required for VS Code. This will give you a overview of uh, the framework in a more narrowed perspective that's uh, quite helpful. Uh, so for instance, it'll give you a, a hierarchy view that removes any cluttered files that you don't need to see and only show you the files you do need to see and also gives you some useful tools for creating new services and client scripts um, with some boilerplate code just out of the box. Next up is Roho. Roho is an awesome uh, open source project which will sync files between VS Code and Roblox Studio, and that's what's going to let us use that as an external editor for Studio, which is pretty nice. This link will take you to the install page for Roho. This is going to include both a binary on your computer, but it's also going to include a plugin that you need to install for Roblox Studio as well. And that's pretty straightforward to do, very simple. Uh, I remember setting this up within minutes. So very, very simple. It's built on Rust. I won't get into the details of that, but it's a pretty cool project in, in and of itself, and I recommend looking into it a little bit more. Roho for VS Code is an extension for VS Code to uh, basically manage and run Roho. I really like this tool. It's not required. You could just use Roho from the command line if you wanted to, but if you don't, Roho for VS Code, definitely nice. I use it. I like it. Next up is Lua Check. Lua Check is a static analyzer and linter for Lua. It will basically catch syntax errors uh, pretty quickly, and um, the installation of the framework will include a Lua Check. Uh, file configuration to include uh, most up-to-date Roblox API as well. VS Code Lua is also some IntelliSense and linting for Lua. Um, I recommend adding that as well. 
All right, so project setup. How do you set up a new project? It's quite simple, really. Uh, all you need to do is first create a new directory within your computer somewhere for your project. I recommend naming it something meaningful, uh, probably the name of your game, for instance. Then you open it up in VS Code and you run the error game from the init process. And then if you're using Roho for VS Code extension, you actually have to restart VS Code. Um, otherwise, it, it just doesn't recognize that it became a Roho compatible project. So you have to restart it. Uh, this next step's actually changed. Uh, Roblox just recently added a new HTTP permissions feature for um, Roblox Studio plugins. And so it might, you might actually have to be able to skip this. And when you run the plugin for the first time, it'll prompt you to allow a domain and you just allow that. And then you start Roho and get going. So let's do this really quickly just to show how it works. Go to VS Code, open folder. In this case, I already created one called AGF tutorial, but you know, you can create a folder and select it. And then you'll be taken into this kind of blank project. Right, nothing here. So now hit Control Shift P or on, on Mac Command Shift P and type in arrow game framework. And you'll see a bunch of different commands. Just hit the initialize one, press enter. And just like that, we have the framework up and going. So again, this is assuming we've already installed all the extensions we need and everything. So if we do that, we'll see this AGF Explorer icon here on the left. So I could click on that. And I'm going to have a different hierarchical view here now on the left side. And we're not going to go into what these are exactly right now, but you can kind of click through and see some code. All right, so that's set up. And again, the next step says that I need to restart VS Code. So I will do that. I just have to exit out and start it up again. And just like that, I have a Start Roho button down here in the right. So I'm just going to click that. And it will go. OK, so now I'm going to jump into Roblox Studio, create a new place. I've already opened one. And make sure that you have the Roho extension or the Roho plugin running. So I have that running uh, right here. And usually you won't have to change anything here. The defaults are usually fine. You can just click Connect. And just like that, it's syncing between here and VS Code and Studio. So I can go in and I actually see there's some arrow folders. So an important note about Roho is that it will override changes you make within Studio. So any folders that are named arrow, don't try to manipulate any of the files within here within Studio. Because if you do, those changes are going to be overridden. So anything within the arrow folders, those changes need to happen within VS Code. Outside of it is fine, but just don't mess with anything within it within Studio. And that again, that's just a, a way that Roho works. All right, so just to show how Roho actually gets going here, I'm going to show how we can change some code here, and uh, it'll show up right away. So I have a fade controller here. Don't worry about uh, any of the code here. We're just going to demonstrate that we can change it uh, on the fly. So if I go in Roblox Studio here, I'm going to go to that module here as well. And at the bottom here, where we're registering stuff, let's, let's add a print statement within VS Code. Scroll to the bottom. And I'm just going to say print hello from VS Code. And then I'm going to save it, go to Studio. And you'll see it right there. So updates right away. So again, it'll update once it saves. Get rid of it, go to Studio, and it's gone. Just like that. So that's how we set up our environment for VS Code. Now, when we come back and we want to continue development on a particular game, we don't have to go through all that setup, of course. So imagine I just got into Studio and vote Roho's off. I didn't have VS Code up. So I, what I would do, I would start up VS Code. I would open my project, start Roho, start Roho and Roblox as well, and you're good to go. So nice and simple. One other thing that is really nice about having things within an external editor like this is that 
you can uh, integrate uh, source control. So if you have GitHub um, or just Git, I guess, uh, you can easily get that up and going. If you don't know what Git is, and that's something you maybe you could look into researching yourself uh, on your own time. Uh, if you don't know much about it, that's fine. Don't worry about it. If you do know about Git and you have a GitHub account, highly recommend doing this, but you can just you know run your Git commands from here. So you can do a git init to start a new project here and uh, off you go. So that's something I would recommend doing for kind of full scale games that you're working on for sure. All right, that's it for this first video.